everyone and welcome to Voices of Alto. Today we have a very special guest because we are interviewing Dean Patrick. He is a dean of two programs. One is uh, international marketing and the other one is business analytics, right? Yeah. So welcome very uh, to Voices of Alt and thank you for being here. Here to you. be a host uh, for our episode. Can you please introduce a little bit yourself? Of course. Uh, well, thank you for having me here. This is really exciting to be on the other side of the table or the other side of the podcast, <laughs> exactly. right? I've listened to a couple, so it's really fun to see how Amazing. the magic is made. So mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm a part of the Hulk community. I love being here. Um, we were talking a little bit before today's episode that I've been at Hulk for five years, mm -hmm. but uh, an academic dean for four. Um, I've worked, uh, started working with international business students, actually. I worked with the MIB program for a couple of years. Uh, then I took on my uh, opportunity to work with the marketing students, which is a lot of fun. Um, which, is, and which is us. Which, which is, is the which best. Is <laughs> Um, and then um, I did a little transition and I took on business analytics and then we had another colleague come in and work with international marketing. And so I love my job because if you think about um, international marketing and business analytics, it's so right brain, left brain, right? It's yeah. the opportunity to work with people who are so dynamic in their own way and solve problems, but solve problems from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's kind of like what I do. I get to work with international students, international colleagues, um, and spend a lot of time on this beautiful campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. just what you just mentioned is super important because uh, I think Lydia and I are doing the dual degree and we're taking right now international marketing mm -hmm. and then we're going to take uh, business analytics because of the same reason. We think it complements like uh, the right ways yeah um, that's uh, why we made that decision exactly and uh, i'm gonna take san francisco oh, sorry i'm gonna take like the course of uh, amban so business analytics in san francisco um but there was like even this opportunity to have it here and i think like you know discovering even different cities uh, yes. within the same school it's yeah. such an amazing opportunity yeah. they gave us so, the opportunity yeah. to make it so easy you mm -hmm. just decide if you want to do it or not and then you just move up campus yeah that's, that's that's right. you. I mean, Boston's going to miss you. <laughs> Absolutely. But I know many, many of my students that started in Boston are now in San Francisco, and they're very happy. But, yeah. I mean, that's what employers want, right? Like, mm -hmm. problems are more three-dimensional. They yeah. need to be interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you understand marketing, and then you can also do the analytics piece behind it. Yes. That's right. It makes you more competitive, mm -hmm. and it makes you more, I think, um, a dynamic as far as a, a long career in the world. Yeah, I think that it's mostly uh, even about like how you can speak to the other person in the sense that in marketing, we always think like, okay, it's very creative, you know, right. but it's not just about creativity. There is even a side for numbers right. and uh, all That's the data right. and how can you co like collaborate with other people from the same team, from the same company, but that are from the marketing, or oh, sorry, or oh, maybe like for the finance uh, department. So all of this even allows you to adapt to the different situations that there are around uh, yeah. the real world, I would say. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you have a great idea in the world of marketing that you know is going to move the needle as far as revenue, yes. income, or super converting converting potential customers to clients, you need to, have to know how to talk to the finance team to, to get your idea budgeted, right? To get yeah. your idea budgeted and to really make sense that you make sure that it's critical, right? Because sometimes decisions have to be made within businesses and some ideas have to be sunset and not be operationalized. And the way you do that is really articulating it to everyone in the company to mm -hmm. show value. Yes, yes, totally agree. Um, what about, a we want to know a little bit more about you in the okay. personal okay. side. Like, you are from the U.S., right? Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. Like, where you grew up, mm -hmm. how was yours, where you went to school? Sure. Yeah, my accent usually gives me away as being uh, one of the... <laughs> we, I, we couldn't tell. <laughs> we have no idea. Uh, I, sometimes I use y'all. So I'm from the yeah. South, right? So <laughs> Southeast United States is where I grew up. So Florida is really my home state, not Massachusetts. And I lived most of my life there. And Florida is a really interesting melting pot because if you think about it from a state, I mean, you've got Latin and Caribbean influence yes. in the Southern part. The middle is so tourist centric. It's such a place where people come. And then I grew up actually in, in the Northern part, which is more Southern in its identity. So, um, so 
Florida is where I'm originally from. Um, I went, I, I grew up in a beach town, a very mm-hmm. small beach town. So. We love beach. Yeah. We just so came back we from beach. We just came back from Florida. Yeah, yeah from so. Miami. Yes. We had a short trip. It was just like Rafael and I and two other uh, friends of us. So shout out to Pascal and okay. Louise there. Um, and we met, like, they are our classmates. And we had uh, a trip that like we had... Um, few days off from school and uh, we decided to go all together to Miami what so yeah it was yes. very nice lucky you lucky you <laughs> I was still here in the freezing cold <laughs> so <right>. I'm <laughs> jealous um but so I grew up at the beach um I'm from a, a town that's called New Smyrna it's the shark bite capital of the United States <laughs> Thanks so we're not there. So ah. if you were swimming, think about that. <laughs> but I grew up very casual, you know, flip flops at high school, tank tops, like a very relaxed vibe. And then I, um, I was a first generation college student. So mm-hmm. others in my family, yeah. So um, I really feel also that I connect with a lot of our students here that have never like maybe um, studied abroad or gone to college. Maybe have families that haven't had this same journey. I, I understand where they come from. Um, so I, I did college in the state of Florida at a very large state school of over 40,000 students. So mm-hmm. when you see on television like a traditional American university with football and all of the things that come with it, that was my experience, <laughs> right? Um, and nice. I think that that is actually one of the reasons why I'm here right? uh-huh. I'm now is because I went to a place that was so homogeneous and so alike me. Um, that I would, you know, see occasionally in an international student you meet in a class or something, and you're like, how did you end up from Turkey yeah. to be in Florida? How yeah. did you get from <laughs> Italy to Florida, right? And I just became inquisitive about it. And then, you know, my family also, they didn't have the opportunity to go to school, uh, to higher education. They also didn't have an opportunity to travel internationally. So neither of my parents is, had ever left the United States either. Um, so that's what got me really interested in kind of this exploration. You know, one thing led to another. I decided I wanted to work in higher education because I like learning. I'm a, a little bit of a nerd. <laughs> nerd badge of honor. Yeah. Like I'm a nerd. I like to read. I like to learn. I like to study. Um, which is good because I'm a dean now, so <laughs> it seems congruent. Um, I ended up here in Boston. I love it, and I love the fact that I get to work here. So I was introduced to some friends who first, you know, got me interested in this idea, like, you can explore too, you can leave the country. And so the first country that I ever left or a place besides the United States I ever went to was Belize. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the first place I ever went. Um, I, I was an older person leaving the country for the first time, um, so I was 30 years old. So I know wow. that neither of you are probably near that age yeah. right now. But can you I'm imagine? Almost, I'm almost. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> you don't look it. But um, <laughs> but imagine the fact that, like, right now you're sitting in a country that is very mm. different from the place you're at. And yes. in my life story, I haven't had the experiences that you are having. So you are already so much richer in your life's journey. But um, I went to Belize. I loved being uncomfortable there. I but that was a new experience, right? Yeah, and I'm not a Spanish speaker, so it was so interesting to learn to like navigate and talk to people about their culture and also kind of question my culture, all the assumptions yeah. Yeah. that you make. Like, why do I do this? All the single stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, that was fun. Then I went to a couple other places in Central and Southern um, uh, South America. Um, and then from there, I eventually moved up here. But I went to then Europe and got excited. And then I met a friend at a dinner party. Don't ever enter, underestimate dinner parties. <laughs> How important. I met a friend through a mutual acquaintance at a dinner party who worked at Holt. Uh-huh. And she started started just telling me about like, you know, there's a hundred students from this country and there's all of these things. And we do this international, international cultural festival, by the way, is coming up in a few yes. weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone needs to go to it. It's like nice. United Nations, like you get all the great food, all the music, all the colors. So take advantage of that. So she told me and got me so interested. And that's when I started learning about Holt and I applied and here. Nice. And yeah. now that you are the dean of two courses, mm-hmm. how does that feel to be the deans and represent students that are from all over the world? Because, again, we say so many times, but HALT is a world inside this building. Yes. It can host yes. so many cultures, uh, can share so many different traditions. Uh, mm-hmm. And yet here we are all together in one room, you know. Um, how does that feel? How does it feel for you? Well, you know, some days overwhelming, right? Mm. <laughs> like, because there's a lot of questions. Yes. People, I recognize that a lot of people that are here 
they've, they're navigating this for the first time, yeah. right? So this is my fifth year at Holt. So I know what kind of think about what's coming up. And so, but sometimes I get questions from students and I'm like, why are you worried about this? It's not a big deal, but I understand it's their first time on this journey. So some days it feels overwhelming. Other days it's super exciting and I'm so proud. Like how cool is my job, right? Yeah. That I get to learn about different things. Um, uh, but it's a lot of fun, right? My work is fulfilling, right? I feel like I get to do stuff that adds value, right? That I know that there are now people around this world who own their own businesses or are really successful in companies and organizations that hopefully remember that I was able to support them on that journey. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great. It's a lot of fun. Um, how else does it feel to be a halt, right? I think it also makes you second guess like I said, when I started abroad, about your whole experience, right? Yes. Like every time I start to think I know, like this is where the world works, unfortunately, I learn about something else, right? Uh, uh, un unfortunately, a, a negative event happens in a country mm -hmm. that I'm not familiar with, and a student will come in to yeah. sit down with me, and they'll educate me about, you know, what's happening to their family, what's going on in the political climate, you know? Unfortunately, we saw there was a, a horrible earthquake that happened yeah. in um, Turkey this yes. week and I've been really thinking about the students immediately like who do I know that's from there yeah do I need to reach out to those students and see uh, are their families okay and and even if they don't have family they're directly impacted how it feels to, to know that there's so much um, unease in their in their part of the world so um, and I think school has been like you know um, making us aware of what's going on and how to help mm -hmm. which is cool because the school just reacted so fast yeah um, Connecting with what you're just saying, um, I know you love Holt. We love Holt too. Mm -hmm. uh, but what would you say is like the thing that you like the most of working here? Gosh, what do I like the most about working here? And um, adding to Rafa's question, I oh, was like, even what is the, the most challenging maybe thing that is like how Your it gives here, you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've worked at a lot of different higher education institutions and you know, I, higher education is a fun place to work because it's all about learning and about self-growth. Mm -hmm. But higher education also has a reputation for being sometimes stale, right? So we've done it like this for 40 years, so we're always going to do it this way. Just yeah. rush off the same thing, change the date on it, and do it again. Mm -hmm. And being really stuck in kind of this, like this is the way it's always been done, so deal with it. And that can be hard. So what I love about Holt, the most exciting thing, right, is that we're always changing. Yeah. So we are not afraid to try something out, to take a risk. And if it doesn't work, I think that I'm, we're also a place where we admit, like, well, you know, that wasn't exactly what we were hoping for, but lessons were learned. Let's do a little, like, post-exercise debrief, and let's try it differently next time. So the thing I like the most is that this is a place where if you have an idea and you think that there's something that could be done better, that we're able to do that. We're not afraid to take risks. And I think that's what we teach students that they need to do in their, in their businesses and in their classes. You either adapt or you die. Right, so think about blockbuster video. Yeah, like oh, they didn't yeah, adapt yeah, yeah. and they died, yeah, and we're yeah, not yeah. afraid to do that. Yeah. And the most challenging part, if I can, mm -hmm. if I can say, is um, the other part is that we have this privilege to be a multi-campus institution in multiple countries. And how do we keep, I guess, the student experience to be consistent from campus to campus? Yeah even when there are cultural differences, yeah. right? How does the Dubai journey reflect the same journey that students are having in San Francisco or Boston? To go back on what you said, uh, um, that we are all learning, uh, I would like to recall what one of our professors yesterday actually said. It was his first uh, lesson, first okay. class for us, and his name is Atul Minocha. Um, sorry if I don't pronounce it properly. It was a wonderful pronunciation. <laughs> okay, yeah. but he's proud. Extra he, credit for you. <laughs> he comes from India and he said, guys, you're here to learn. But again, I'm here to learn as well. So please give me all the feedback. After class, uh, mm -hmm. if I was too boring, too fast, too slow, tell me what you know, want to know a little bit more. And when he said that, I was like, wow, this guy knows so much because I... I, sorry, I stalked his LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I saw like all of his experience. He was sharing with us all experience, yet he was so humble to tell us, mm -hmm. I'm 21, um, not have all of his experience mm -hmm. and still saying, I value your opinion. I value 
your um, ideas that you have and you can my promote. So yeah. Yeah, he mentioned several times in the class, guys, if you're lost, please make me stop the class and understand what's going on because I'm not gonna make the class keep going if you are not on the same page. Yeah. And there was a lot of people like these or just stopping the class to deeply understand what he was saying so we can keep going. Um, yeah, so I like That's all of this yeah, 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 yeah. In engagement that there is inside the class. And uh, basically, you are not fear to be vulnerable at all. Like if you do have a question, like you don't fear to raise your hand because maybe it sounds like stupid in your head. Well, maybe not. And you know what? If it's yeah. stupid, okay, it's fine. Like we yeah. are here all to learn. Right. This is something that uh, when I was back in Italy, because I started in Italy for most of my life, well, all my life, but now <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and we are 21 uh, years of <laughs> still um, where will she go next that's exactly <laughs> where will she go next San Francisco San Francisco exactly yes. no but there I was kind of afraid or always at least like seeing the teachers that they were like higher authority than right. me whereas like here um, still like you bring a lot of respect to that person um, to everyone actually you should bring respect but like to to the teacher with a higher like uh, authority still being able to feel vulnerable or at least yes. not feel that you're failing somehow yes well, no that's yes. the thing i was saying about higher education right like, yeah. that's why hold is different yeah exactly. because other places you may feel like this person stands in front of the room and the exchange is one direction right read the book this is my lecture i'm the expert and i'm only delivering information to you and hold what what I think that professor did in your class is he one he he modeled for you that true leadership or mentorship and management is two directional, right? So the, he needs to provide you information, but he needs to listen and take feedback, yeah. and you need to adapt. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think the other is he taught you about the whole piece about like interrupt or raise your hand if you're lost. He also told you it's okay to advocate for yourself. Like if you don't speak up for yourself, this you may miss, miss that opportunity. Yeah, and that thing that you're saying that they show them themselves vulnerable, mm -hmm. I think is super important. I think you mentioned the other day that one of the things that you like mo the most about being in Hull is like how the students here inspires you and encourage you mm -hmm. to you know keep going. If you can see people that young yeah. just leaving their countries yeah. to take this challenge, yeah. being here with us. I mean, yeah, no. brave people. Um, you were like just saying it like that. It's like how students come in every year here inspires you to you know keep growing and be better. All and for me, that was like that's really really nice to hear because it's not just okay. It's the dean, yes, but I yeah. mean we can inspire our dean too. And probably no, mo most of the people just not aware or that close to you. We have the chance talking here, but not everyone. So like just. That's why we have a podcast exactly. so that we can share <laughs> so can to share. everyone. Yeah. Like uh, this is a, at the end is even marketing, right? Yeah. To share like what we have, yeah, uh, uh, the resources. So, so no, yeah. I, I believe that. I, I mean, I do get inspired by being at Hull and working with the students. And I, and bravery, I think, is something that everyone has to find for themselves what bravery means. But you know, the world is very complicated, and it's very scary to navigate today's yes. world. Right? It gets more and complicated. I feel like every year, right? We just went through the pandemic, which yeah. I don't know that we hopefully never experience a time that's hopefully. more complicated than that. Um, but it can be sometimes you can feel overwhelmed and you want to retreat and you say, okay, it'd be easier just to stay in my hometown and, and just do what my family has done. We've had this business. I could go into my father's footsteps or it's easier not to travel. It could be easier not to take the risk and quit the job and start my own business. But then I hear the stories from the students all the time and all the amazing things. So one of the things that's interesting, right, is I don't like to fly. I don't, I don't enjoy flying. I, I, some okay. people do. Yeah. Some people love it. That's great. Good for them. You love it. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I do. I do. <laughs> I get there like probably yeah, one of my least favorite things. But every time I have to take a flight, like one, I realize it's part of life, and it's yeah. the opportunities that getting on a plane gives me are more important and yeah. rewarding than the the fear that I fear. But I always think about Holt students. I always think when I get on a flight oh, interesting. about a Holt student getting on a plane because I'm like, these people that I work with get on a plane 
that is maybe 18 hours or 14 hours from their country, multiple, and maybe they're coming from very rural airports and whatever, and I am worried about getting on a flight from a very global yes. hub city and going you know, an hour and a half down the road to another <laughs> global hub city. Like, yes. What is your problem? So it's just like simple things in life make me um, brave, but I've also seen it when students like share information about their their backgrounds with professors in the classroom very openly. I'm sure that's happened for you, and you're like, yeah. can't believe yes. that that person has gone through that, and now here they are. Yeah, um, and we we're meeting amazing people here. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think just the first weeks of class, we just like knew where, where they were from mm -hmm. and the names, but then. And in some classes, we start sharing about our personal lives, yeah. and our backgrounds, professional life. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get to know the people. And that's when you get shocked about like, oh, wow, I had no idea. The story. Exactly, the story behind this person. Um, and you're going to find these everywhere in class. So okay. just if I can recommend you all to do something, it's just like, and someone else recommended to us before, mm -hmm. it's just of this first group of friends that you made at the beginning, yeah. just open it a little bit more. You're going to know more people, more incredible people. Um, just keep expanding the network, maybe. Remember yeah, that is not just like a network, I would say. It's mostly like sharing uh, um, professional, but even personal aspects of your life, of your experiences. Uh, and that definitely helps you in so many ways to... Uh, find uh, in the other person that it might be completely different from you still like some similarities and then like at that point you can start to feel like even how at home in the other part of the world yeah. which is incredible like i know that i can call my place now here home oh, yeah. when i was uh, flying back here um from miami from that trip i was in the uber i was like I'm going back home now. <laughs> like, this is yes. home. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, relieving. And yeah. it was super nice. Yeah, the way we think about home is such a different concept for this yeah. global generation, right? The people that work and study and experience whole, I think we think about us as a global generation and we're more mobile now, right? So yeah. you're probably yeah. not going to stay in the same 200 um, kilometers around where you were born anymore. You're going to have such an expanded network. I like to ask students when the new class comes in every year, and people introduce themselves and they'll say, you know, I am from Peru, right? And I'll say, well, what city in Peru, right? Oh, okay. First thing I used to like is I, I will typically tell people to show me on a map where it is because, I mean, we, you know, someone tells you I'm from Peru, I, I'm not familiar enough with the country. Yeah. I need to see the city. Yeah. But then I like to ask students, if I only had one day to, to spend in your hometown, what should I do? And it's so interesting to hear how people talk about it. Like, you'll hear everything from, like, you need to go to this museum or you need to see this natural wonder or like this one student told me he's like you just need to go to my grandmother's house and she's oh my god have, i was yeah, picturing that like she my grandmother is going to cook you this meal and you're gonna have to sit at her table and let her talk to you for like six hours while she cooks this amazing hand meal and then you need to eat it yes and then that's all you need to see in my country to understand my culture and it's like that's where you really understand not only like who people are and we think about this is my country, this is my flag, yeah. but you really hear their story about what makes meaning for them. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a really yeah. That's cool, a, yeah. That's, that's a, like a nice way to explore deeper just with a single question. Yeah, what would I do for the day? Like, yeah. I thought about, it's like Anthony Bourdain, right? If anyone's ever seen Anthony Bourdain, he's like a, he's a, sh he's a famous chef, he's passed away now, but he had a show where it was like, He's, he was called Layover, and he would spend, like, 24 hours in a city every episode. Nice. Oh. And what do you do in a day? Nice. Because right? you can't do it all. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have to pick. Ask that question at your next dinner party. Uh-huh. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, definitely we will. Your, your <laughs> yeah. Well, that was actually a very nice question. When I We do have a question for you that okay. our previous uh, um, guest uh, has made, okay, which okay. we won't tell you who was that person. Okay. But they asked... If you were to win an award, which award uh, would you be thrilled to get? And uh, what would the n be the name of it? Of the award. If you can get one award. For anything. For anything. Why would it be? An award for anything. And it has to be something I haven't yet won, right? It's something I mean, you can even create it on yourself. I don't know. Like, I'm the 
best at drinking coffee. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at that. Actually. So yeah. Um. Okay. So the award that I would love to win, right? If I could win an award, um, would be best listener. Mm-hmm. I think I would be like world's best listener. That's right? actually a very nice yes. skills to have uh, for a dean. Right. Like I think. Um, it's hard because we're all so busy and I'm super guilty of it. So I say I want to be world's best listener because I don't think I am a mm, great listener. Mm-hmm. I think that it's an area where I can improve on, but I do know how important it makes me feel when I feel heard mm-hmm. and, and someone really like slows down, turns their phone off and they sit and have a, a cup of coffee or a tea with me. Um, and how important it is when I listen to someone and I can see at the end of a conversation, they go from, anxious and and lost to like oh my gosh they created their own clarity yeah so um i would call it um, i call it quality time and i do really appreciate that i do try to spend as much quality time with my friends with my family as well Mm -hmm. and yeah that's the feeling you know when you just like even want to map a little bit where you are locating yourself yeah it's presence right like it's it's so meaningful just being heard or have the skill to be able to hear someone without getting any distractions and actually caring about the conversation Mm -hmm. because I think that's listening, right? It's not just like, okay, tell me what you need to tell me. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's just like being aware of how they're feeling, what you have to tell that person to understand. Uh, I think that's a really strong skill that we should all improve. Like, I, I think there's always going to be room to improve it. So yeah, yeah, it's not a transactional. Um, it's not a transactional action. It should be like more like a human conversation yes. and like uh, just like here as we are doing. <laughs> so uh, when I used to teach a class, um, I did a, a communication course, and one of the activities we did because I think a lot of times when we listen, we're listening for response, right? Like. Yeah. I'm, hearing you just enough so I can tell you my answer. I used to do an activity with students where maybe the two of you were working together and make you sit across from each other. And I would give you a prompt for maybe three minutes and you have to talk and you have to just listen. You can't respond. You can't give verbal cues, anything. You just have to listen, right? Um, And it's so hard to sit there for like three minutes. You can't respond. But you give like the, the prompt like, it helps when you know each other, but say like, you know, what is some of the things that you appreciate most about Rafia? Mm-hmm. And he has to sit there and listen to it mm-hmm. for three minutes. <laughs> you have to keep talking and he can't respond. It's so hard, yes. right? Yeah, that's right. You know, so I think you should try that more as like um, an opportunity just to connect with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And now, like, to conclude the episode, Correct. we have started a uh, tradition, and we're going to conclude with a question that you have for your next, for our next, for our uh, next speaker. Guess. All right, so this is a good one, I think. Um, we were talking about it in the academic team earlier mm-hmm. today, and everyone was sharing their responses. So the question I have is, I'm interested to know when your next guest, if they can answer, when was the first time in life that they felt like an adult when they knew that the first time the first time when did they feel like an adult wow (laughs) that is really hard Um, i think like it requires a little bit of time to think about it yeah yeah because you have to think a lot of what you have been through exactly (laughs) and then at that point when you're just like maybe sitting on your side and say wow (laughs) <laughs> that's a responsibility <laughs> yeah. that an adult will yeah, take exactly. so that's mean <laughs> well, I mean some people talk about it in like age right they thought like yeah. oh when I was this age you know and I finally whatever and other people talked about like a specific experience they had a thing they had to do or an achievement they accomplished or one person just said it was like this time that they were sitting in a cafe and they ordered like a meal by themselves and were having a cup of tea and realized like they were there kind of like navigating this world and they could choose to do whatever they wanted to do. No one was there to tell them. So it's an interesting question. It is. It happened to be that maybe on a Sunday or in night, I was going out for a coffee with friends to chat and I was like, wow, is is this what I do now? (laughs) (laughs) I'm a Sunday coffee (laughs) chat. Like, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Well, for me, I think like when I was, when I took my first flight to fly to Australia on my own, 
and that was a very long flight i do remember it and i was just like sitting on the plane alone no <laughs> like it was my first trip by myself me and i and uh, at that point i was like oof I'm responsible for everything I'm doing. Yes. Even if I was 15, I was like, now, Lydia, you have to behave, okay? Yes. Responsible. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good. So my response, so my initial thought was when I bought my first house. Mm. Like, that's a huge thing. Oh, like, yes. A huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I bought a house. I'm an adult. And then I realized later on that the real moment I felt like I was an adult is um, about uh, 12 years ago, one of my family members, one of my parents passed away. Mm -hmm. And to experience the loss of a parent and realizing like you no longer had that person that you could call to, and then I also needed to be more of a caregiver for my, my surviving parents. So yeah. the that hierarchy of yes. like someone's raising me to I saw somebody um, kind of complete their journey and I have responsibility for somebody else. Yeah. So, so that's very deep. Thank you very much yes. for sharing yes. it. Yes, <laughs> I didn't mean to, to end their no. conversation. No, that. Too, but I think it is interesting to see what when people it clicks for them. Like I'm yeah. an adult now. It's all scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very well, much. Guys, yeah. Thank if you, you wanna, so much. if you wanna answer that question in, in the, the comments, comments <laughs> we'll be reading that, and yeah. we will definitely reply. So yeah, thank you very much, Jim Patrick. You guys. So this has been a pleasure. I can't wait to read the answers to it. And best yeah. of luck. <laughs> We'll see. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. bye. <laughs>